Every now and again, this bad recommendation surfaces. It is actually taught in some curriculums and printed in at least one published emergency veterinary text that I've come across. At the 2007 Special Operations Medical Association Conference, during the combat medic vignette presentations, a medic was presenting his casualty experience when it started going something like this. So I stuck my finger in his wound and, no shit, it felt like a vagina, at which point the entire audience of about 400 attendees collectively looked at their neighbor and asked, did he actually just say that? And then he continued. So I put a tampon in it. I'm sure almost everyone that has ever received tactical medical training or read through first aid posts in an online prepper form has probably heard this advice in some form. Back in 2000, during my EMT ambulance practicum, noticing there was no big field dressings like the army issued me, I asked my preceptor, if we get a really big bleeder, what do we have to use? To which he answered, probably the diapers. To start with, let's define exactly what the issue is that is being addressed in plain language. It is often recommended that to treat massive hemorrhage, particularly from gunshot wounds, that tampons, sanitary pads, and even diapers are acceptable, cheap, and effective bandages. The qualification they give is that they are designed to, quote, soak up blood and fluid. As you will learn in the hemorrhage control video series, if you are, quote, soaking up blood, you aren't controlling hemorrhage. You are only keeping the floor clean. When someone asks the question, how much blood can this bandage soak up? They are missing the point and don't fully understand hemorrhage control. Sanitary pads and diapers are specifically engineered and manufactured to soak up blood and urine and hold it in, keeping it dry. They rapidly wick fluid away from the surface. If you consider the way blood clots in a wound, that mechanism of device function is actually working against what you are trying to accomplish. Effective hemorrhage control is to tightly pack gauze up against the damaged blood vessel and fill the entire wound and hold it under pressure. Medical gauze is specifically designed for this purpose. It puts a significant amount of surface area in the form of the gauze fibers in the area where the blood is leaking out. The manual pressure is to minimize this leaking by squeezing the damaged blood vessels closed. Blood flow is slowed, and with the clotting cascade in the blood activated, it becomes sticky and hopefully sticks to the gauze fibers and all their surface area. With pressure maintained and minimal movement and disruption, hopefully a clot will form eventually within the matrix of the gauze fibers over the hole in the damaged vessels that will hold and prevent further hemorrhage. Place a sanitary pad or diaper on a wound and it doesn't put surface area substrate in the wound for clots to bind to and form a plug around the damaged vessel. Rather, it actually wicks the blood away, almost like sucking it out of the wound, leaving no clotting or clotted blood present in the wound to seal it. The blood is wicked into the core of the diaper or sanitary pad and clots there, nowhere near the damaged vessel where it is needed to adhere to and form the plug. The other adjunct and more commonly recommended is the tampon. The theory is that tampons soak up blood, so they should be good at hemorrhage control. After all, that's what they are designed for, isn't it? They come on a stick that seems like it should slide right into the bullet wound track, so why wouldn't it be effective in a gunshot wound for hemorrhage control? When you consider the ballistic effects on the tissue, when tissue is struck with a high velocity projectile, the kinetic energy transfer causes both a permanent and temporary cavity. Those cavities also disrupt tissue planes, which creates access to potential spaces for blood to pool in internally, as well as flowing through the permanent wound cavity out the entry and exit wound if an artery is damaged. Medical gauze sold for packing wounds is usually around four inches wide by 12 feet long. That's 576 square inches and a typical gunshot wound will easily eat that entire roll and possibly then some. Remember, the goal of packing is to replace all the tissue that has been removed, packing the wound tightly to apply internal pressure. I wasn't aware of how much gauze is in a tampon, so I opened one up. 
I needed to soak it in water as it was compressed extremely tight. And trying to open it dry just pulled off little torn pieces, little pieces that if they became loose and lost in a wound would be great infection beds. A tampon I found is made of two two by four inch pieces of gauze like material on a little string and that's it. Other than the cardboard applicator, that's eight square inches compared to 576 square inches of sterile medical gauze in a standard package. A tampon is not designed to stop bleeding. It is not designed to clot blood from a wound. In its intended use, the bleeding source is not the vagina, but rather from the uterus. The blood flows out through the cervix into the vagina. The blood released during menstruation is between 10 and 30 milliliters over a period of three to eight days. The tampon is designed to soak up no more than five milliliters of blood and hold it within the gauze. The required function is very different from hemorrhage control. In the presence of a damaged artery, two two by four pieces of gauze are like throwing a rock at a tank. With so little substance, the small content of the tampon would become overwhelmed by arterial bleeding. Anecdotes of them actually working successfully are likely attributed to them plugging the external release of blood and keeping it hidden in the wound, forming hematomas. Or the wound wasn't an arterial bleed in the first place. When critical thinking is applied to these recommendations, they no longer make sense. As an old friend once said, you can eat soup with a fork, but only if you have to. If you're purchasing equipment for a first aid kit on a budget, sterile medical gauze is not expensive. If you need to improvise on the spot, ripped up strips from a t-shirt are ideal. I would recommend staying away from hygiene products for hemorrhage control. For more information, check out the hemorrhage control video series. Thank you for watching.